Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel, Traveling with Jose. I'm Jose, and for today's video, we're going to be talking about the Gilman Scholarship. So, I was recently awarded the Gilman Scholarship. I am so happy, you guys have no idea. Looking back, I am so happy I applied, so happy um, people motivated me to do it, and that I myself also was motivated to finish the requirements for this. I'm going to use this scholarship to actually go to uh, Thailand, and I'm gonna get into the story a little bit later, but I kinda want to give you guys an overall like idea of the scholarship, the eligibility requirements, uh, some of my tips, so uh, stick throughout this video and I'm telling you if you guys watch my video uh, since I literally just went through this process I'm gonna tell you everything and um, hopefully it helps you out so that you can actually get this scholarship I'm telling you like I watched all the videos I went to all the uh, zoom meetings for the scholarship I talked I emailed with uh, the organization so I did a lot to um, you know better the chances for me to actually get it and now that I got it I can actually help you guys out so uh, stick along with me uh, for you know everything I have to explain right so uh, the Gilman scholarship I found out about it because I was doing uh, research on studying abroad and if you watch this channel uh, you know I love traveling right so before I used to travel because I was working with the Navy uh, now that I'm a student of course I want to kind of take that um, student route that educational route um, and go abroad right I want this program to actually work towards my undergrad right so uh, there's a lot of benefit with uh, traveling abroad. Uh, literally, like if you've never traveled abroad, you're gonna, your, your experience is gonna be out of this world. Uh, you know, I've traveled a little bit, so this experience, I still feel like, and I'm going back to a country that I've been to, but I still feel like I'll learn so much. So I'm, I'm so happy for this opportunity. I wanna thank uh, the, the State Department who funds this. Uh, thank you for giving it to me. Um, if I would have not gotten the scholarship, I would have not actually traveled abroad. I would have just stayed in the U.S. Later on, I'll also get to like you know how much I got from the scholarship and you know the whole process. So um, I do have a couple of things written down that we have to actually go through uh, the logistics of it all. Right, eligibility requirements. Okay, guys, you have to be a U.S. citizen. You have to be receiving the federal Pell Grant. So that means if you applied for financial aid. Uh, you could have possibly been given the federal Pell Grant. You're going to have to uh, check with your records and everything. The program that you do for this scholarship or with this scholarship, it has to be credit bearing. So that means that the credits have to apply for your undergrad. If you're going to community college, because you can, yes, be going to community college and get the scholarship. I'm going to community college right now and I got the scholarship. So a lot of people in uh, community college don't actually apply for scholarships. Um, you know, maybe they're not thinking about um, going abroad during their two years at community college, but definitely think about it if you are in community college or if you're at a four year institution, definitely think about it. So, the minimum requirement for your program, like the program length at a community college, has to be minimum two weeks. And if you're at a four year institution, it has to be minimum of three weeks. And the great thing with the scholarship is that also you can go to many countries within the program. So, like, let's say your program starts you off in France and then you go to Italy and then you go to Portugal. It can actually, you can actually go to all these places. Like all the money will pro possibly, depending on how much you get, could be allotted to pay for your whole trip or at least part of it, even if there's more than one country involved. Now the other thing is that you have to be going to countries and right now because of COVID, this is a COVID video, uh, COVID time frame. So the travel advisory for the country has to be at a level uh, one or two to actually be able to um, get the funds and go to this country. If the country is at a level three or four, uh, you won't be able to go to that country, right? So the government has strict procedures on that. So um, I guess I'll tell you guys right now, I had intended to use this scholarship to go to Japan. Uh, right now, Japan is, a, is at a, a level three travel advisory. So I can't go. So I found a program uh, for Thailand uh, to actually go out there and get TESOL certification, so to teach English. I'll be there around three months. A lot, the scholarship is going to cover almost all of it. Uh, I'm going to apply to actually more scholarships too to see, like, that way I have zero debt after this. Um, you know, have scholarships pay for all my travel abroad. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to apply to other scholarships. But this main one, Gilman Scholarship, paid a lot. 
uh, actually four thousand dollars there's a maximum or a cap of five thousand so I got almost all of the scholarship funding so I'm really happy but yeah there's some other things that you have to do with the scholarship it's not you know just sign up and you get it um, you have to write some essays uh, and I know it, it might sound daunting um, I had to write four uh, some people might have to write three so depending on your program and if you want extra funding that fourth one um, is why you apply for with, with another essay right so the first uh, essay is going to be called a statement of purpose so you know it's in the name you have to kind of like tell them about yourself um, get to the nitty-gritty you know no fluff with all of these essays like who you are, why you want this, and if you go on the website, if you do all your research with the Gilman, everything is laid out for you. You just have to uh, tell them your story. No matter what you've done with your life, you have a story to tell. Okay, so gather up the, the little moments, even if something seems very petite, very, you know, not worth writing about, you never know. Okay, so like expand your thought, D definitely get down to, um, you know brainstorming and thinking about how you can answer these questions most effectively right so because this is these are real people reading your real stories right so can you move them in any way shape or form i kind of did this in a narrative way right so i told them stories every time i talked about my in my essays right so with a statement of purpose and then there's also a uh building mutual understanding essay so like what can you give back when you go overseas um, how will you talk to people? How will you uh, communicate with people uh, from a different culture, uh, from a different background? What, what do you bring to the table? That's the mutual understanding essay. Follow on service essay. So one of the things that you have to do if you get the scholarship is uh, create a project. How will you uh, take the experiences that you've gotten and um, encourage, motivate other people to study abroad, right? So I wrote about how I'm going to make YouTube videos, right? Documenting my time in Thailand, showing you guys that, you know, it is possible to study abroad. It is possible to go any, almost anywhere uh, studying abroad, right? With the Gilman Scholarship. So I'm gonna do that. That's my service project. I'm also going to be talking to my community college about how they can, um, the students there can go study abroad. Critical Need Language Award. So it's, um, there's a cap of five thousand dollars right to the scholarship but if you apply for the critical need language award you can go up to eight thousand dollars right so they can give you an extra three thousand dollars with the critical need language award though you will have to be going to a country where you will be learning that critical language so in my case i applied because i was trying to go to japan so i applied and i actually i didn't get that a part of the scholarship but it's understandable so I was going to be going to Japan to do an internship. I wasn't going to actually be studying the language. I mean, I was of course trying, gonna try to, you know, on my own study the language, you know, learn different kanji, uh, talk to people, you know, kind of become a little bit more fluent. Um, so I tried to, uh, you know, apply that to the essay and how I was going to be, you know, studying on my own. And I didn't get the that part of the scholarship, but I totally understand why. Like, if I would have been doing a language program, I'm pretty sure I would have gotten extra funding. Other critical language awards uh, might be, like, if you're studying Turkish, um, Indonesian, Chinese, uh, I think Korean is on there. Um, languages like Azerbaijani, you know, which I had actually never heard about until, you know, looking into the scholarship. So this scholarship is going to also teach you a lot. Now I want to talk about deadlines. So my deadline, they have two cycles each year and I applied for the October cycle, October 2020, right? And I got my results back or, uh, you know, confirmation that I got the award in December, early December. So this is one of those scholarships like you almost immediately find out because you do have to later on plan like you know where you're gonna go, all the logistics of everything. So I have had nothing but good experiences with this uh, scholarship and in that aspect as well. Like I, December, I applied October, I wanna say October 3rd, I forget exactly, but like I applied around October, it was a few days after my birthday I believe, and then I got confirmation December 3rd, right, so literally two months and I got confirmation, so, uh, but 
since they come around, the deadlines are March and October. So you guys are watching this hopefully just in time for the March deadline. Those are kind of like the things that are set in stone with the scholarship. So I kind of want to also go into tips on this scholarship. And if you guys pay attention, follow these tips, you will most likely get this uh, scholarship, which um, st statistics say that you have a one in four chance of getting the scholarship. So it's hard to get, it is very competitive to get, but you know, the possibility is all there. If you plan ahead, if you don't procrastinate, I'm not gonna lie, I procrastinated a little bit, uh, but I got my act together in the end and I got the Gilman Scholarship. Uh, the first tip that I have is follow the Gilman Scholarship, Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship on Instagram on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on YouTube. Watch all the videos, read through a lot of the comments. Um, on Instagram, and I'm, I believe on YouTube, they have the live feature. So a representative of the Gilman Scholarship uh, will go on and talk about the scholarship. And they also bring alumni, so people that have uh, completed the scholarship, to speak, to speak about their experience, on how they were able to get it, how they used it. You know, I watched all these uh, different uh, students. Um, you know, they vary in ages, they vary in races, they vary in, in gender. So, you know, you'll get um, someone that you can relate to, maybe someone that um, chose the same country you wanna uh, go to. So, a lot of interesting uh, people, they talk about how the Gilman Scholarship um, helped them with their career. So it's just a lot of useful information on social media. Like I love the social media presence that the Gilman Scholarship has. I have a lot of people read your essays. So in my case, I had four essays. I had uh, three different people read it. One of the people that I actually worked with was my uh, study abroad advisor. This was a person. This is a person that actually uh, works for the community college. Uh, they're kind of in charge of people that are applying for the Gilman. Every um, college university is going to have one of these. Uh, people and if they don't you are in charge of actually finding this person and um, there's going to be somebody right and if not you can actually talk to uh, Gilman and somebody will be appointed to you okay so the other thing actually it's not a tip but it's like almost like feedback on um, the Gilman scholarship itself they will work with you whatever your question, whatever your situation, they will work with you. Especially now during COVID, they are working, um, you know, pretty much up to date with everything they can be up to date with. Like let's say um, levels change for the travel advisory or you know, you have to change your country. They, they're willing to, to change, you know, um, what you had already applied for. Like, so in my case, right? I applied for Japan and since I'm not going anymore I can change it and one of my questions was what what if I want to change will the amount of funding change no not at all so I'm like that's some of the best news you know it's some scholarships are kind of like set in stone um, it's very hard to work around like you have to work around them they don't work around you so the Gilman scholarship definitely helps you out like almost anything seriously any situation you might have let's say you want to defer you know you won't, you're not able to do it that summer or fall whenever spring you can defer it to next time you know they will work with you like it's not um, a lost cause if like you can't go because of health implications because of something you know, a pandemic or something else you know so they will work with you <laughs> I think I said this before don't procrastinate with writing your essays um, I did a little bit, not gonna lie, um, and I've heard from other people that they did too, uh, but don't do it, get it out of the way, um, have a lot of people read it. Um, I, I'll tell you guys that I actually almost didn't apply for this scholarship, and I didn't apply because, I almost didn't apply because uh, I got busy with other things, with you know my actual um, work at school. Um, well, one, my job at school, and then also my classes. So, like, I was just, you know, I had, had a lot on my plate. So, this was just, you know, kind of like that tipping point where I was like, I don't know, like, if I should do this. Like, it's a lot of work, writing. Like, even though, like, it's information that I know about myself, you know, it's hard to put on paper. So, my study abroad advisor, I could have not done this without her. 
Uh, I think it was like two weeks after we had our, our first uh, Zoom meeting because you have to kind of talk to your um, study abroad advisor. Uh, she reached out to me and she was like, hey, how, how are you doing with this? How are you doing with that? And she motivated me because I was like at that point where I didn't want to do it. But I also I didn't want to let her down. I didn't want to let her down, let myself down. Um, I wanted to go, you know, overseas. At that point, I was thinking about Thailand, uh, about Japan, but you know, Thailand. Like, I just wanted to study abroad, um, and I was gonna do whatever it takes it took to get get there. So, I motivated myself. She motivated me, motivated me, and I was able to finish these essays. But I also had uh, an English professor who is also my mentor read my essays with me, like on a Zoom call. We went over it. Uh, over and over again like if something didn't sound right punctuation uh, yeah, of course he's an English teacher so <laughs> one of the best people to have a proofread an essay uh, and then I had a friend who kind of like you know overall I was more like how does this um, is this story really me you know is this story um, have feeling uh, what what did you think about this um, essay you know I wanted um, somebody that I knew you know their opinion but I wanted them to be like unbiased because I knew they could be, right? So I had my friend read it. Uh, so, and then you yourself just read it a, a lot of times. Um, no fluff, get to the point. Um, on the Gilman website, which is a tip that I had, on the Gilman website, read everything. Everything that they have on the website, read it because it could apply to you, okay? Uh, just like and they'll tell you you know basic things like you know have a lot of people proofread it um, don't misspell foreign or don't misspell abroad you know some easy things right also turn it in a few days before because your uh, travel uh, your study abroad advisor and your financial aid um, officer at the school will have to sign off on this paperwork granted you you have your own deadline and then they have their own deadline for everything, but turn it in early just in case they catch something that's on your end, you're not you know, missing the deadline. Because if you miss it, you're gonna have to wait a whole nother uh, cycle. You can apply until you get it, if you're still you know, an undergrad student. So each time you can improve on something, let's say the first time you don't get it. I, like I'm telling you guys, like I worked hard to get this and I'm so happy I got it. But I, I, I kind of thought, you know, maybe, I didn't have the right story maybe um, it wasn't you know the right time I was I didn't want to get my hopes up but also um, I didn't want to be hurt if I didn't get this uh, scholarship so I'm happy on how everything went um, but you can apply as many times until you get it all right if you're in an undergrad uh, status so GPA is not specified as you know eligibility requirement it helps if it's higher of course but it doesn't have to be the highest you know you don't have to have a 4.0 to get this scholarship um let alone maybe a 3.0 so but i i did have a high gpa applying for the scholarship uh but you know that's you know it, it's case by case so maybe you have a low lower gpa but you have you know a story that resonates with someone and they give you the scholarship you you have a reason uh, to study abroad that you get across, right? So it, there's a lot of variables that go into this process and the people that are uh, pretty much grading, you know, they have a checklist and if you check a lot of boxes off, you, you can probably get the scholarship. Um, so you, with that though, you will need your transcripts. Uh, I was able to turn in unofficial transcripts so that's that's a great thing, you know. I didn't have to hassle with you know talking to my school and get it the official um, transcripts for them. You can go almost anywhere, you know, as long as it's a travel one or two. But uh, anywhere, Taiwan, uh, South Korea, Japan, Thailand. You want to go to Europe? You can go anywhere in Europe. Like if your school has a program and you really want to get into it, or like you can go into third parties but that like you know correlate with your school third party sorry third party companies that correlate with your school so that you can actually go abroad okay i don't know if you understand but you can go almost anywhere with the scholarship that's one of the greatest things so if you had you know france you know in your mind uh, if you had wherever it is like south america central america i um 
they, they actually send you a list with um, everywhere people, you know, got the scholarship for and, you know, what school they went to. So I went in and looked and, you know, people had all these places. They came from all different kinds of schools. Uh, you know, some schools had a lot more people than others. I was actually the only uh, person at my community college to get this award. So, you know, I wanted to uh, put that on the map. So I want to talk about that. If you're a community college student, you can apply for this scholarship and you um, can represent, you know, the people that maybe that are in community college that don't think uh, study abroad is in the books for them, right? It's, it, it's not for them. You know, they can't, they wouldn't be able to afford it. This, this scholarship is made for people with financial needs, okay? So don't shy away from this uh, scholarship. So something else is that you get alumni status once you finish your program and come back from the program, right? So like when you're in the US, there are alumni meetups. Um, everything up right now I've seen is of course online, but if it wasn't online, you know, you go to conventions, you um, go to events, you you can talk about your experience um, as a Gilman alumni with other schools. You know, you, a lot of cool stuff. You get um, workshops, and you also get to socialize with uh, people in different career fields, right? So uh, you get to network, right? One of the most important things uh, when you know thinking about your careers is networking. Like, who do you know? Because of course, I learned in the Navy. It's not about what you know all the time. It's about who you know. Okay, so this is a great networking um, experience if you get the Gilman. <laughs> this is definitely a tip for you guys. Uh, with your essay writing, be specific with who you are, okay? So in my case, I was able to say I'm a first generation student. I am a veteran. I am going to community college. Um, at my community college, I am a student ambassador. Um, I talked about how I, I will correlate my major with my program abroad. I talked about uh, also like the destination itself and how um, I have a connection with that place, right? So when I wrote about Japan, you know, I had a, I had lived there for a couple of years. I knew the people. I knew a little bit of the language. I knew enough that um, I could get the point across that there was a reason for me to return. Right. Unfortunately, I can't go to Japan. Uh, Thailand is, is another place, though. That now that I'm thinking about it, I have a lot to learn. The language, about the culture. I love Thai food. So it's just uh, you know the learning experience that I, I'm in it for. You know, uh, and I, I would have not been able to do this without the Gilman Scholarship. So as a tip, go in and go to that um, section of the website write down all the questions that they ask and then when you're writing your essays make sure you answer them right i i did a check mark thing so i i check marked i was like good that's in my essay that's in my essay that's definitely in my essay um and everything that i've talked about in this video helped me get the gilman scholarship so um i really wish you the best and i know you can do it um, it might be intimidating, it might be scary, uh, you might not have um, the energy or the motivation to do it, but I'm telling you, if you try, you will most likely get it. I will be leaving links to everything that I talked about or any um, resources that can help. Uh, and if you guys have any questions, make sure you ask them. Uh, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, Traveling with Jose. If you guys need any help with uh, the Gilman Scholarship and you want to go ahead and add me on Instagram or just DM me on Instagram, you don't have to add me or anything, DM me on Instagram and I will help you out, okay? Uh, if you want a one-on-one -on -one to talk about the scholarship, if you want to talk about, you know, maybe other things like um, other countries or um, your situation, uh, send me a DM and uh, we can work. I'm really hoping that you guys can get the scholarship. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys learned a lot with this video. Until the next video, guys, take care. Bye.